check check sick okay wait all right there's a lot of people here but i kind of don't care so what? there's a lot of people here but i kind of okay don't we care. have an audience today yeah yeah look at that all right let's start this okay all right hello welcome to another episode of the ejb talk show today i have a very special guest another oh. percussionist and Thank also you. educator big big drumline guy uh andy bush how are you doing man i'm good how are you i'm all right what'd you get up to today uh, what did I get up to today? Um, Beavis destroyed my legs at the gym. You went to the gym with Beavis? Yeah. No way. Yes, yeah, so it was good. That was fun. Uh, went home, had the work study meeting with Ayun. Right. Uh, so that was a good time. And then, yeah, came to tutorials. Did some snare drumming in tutorials. Practiced for a bit. Uh, oh, I suffered Braden in UTSO, and now we're here. Oh, you slept for him today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you were there. Okay. Yeah, he's always just, gone. Like, cleaning up. That's sick. Yeah, it was fun. It was a good time. Yeah? Is yeah. that your first time subbing for UTSO? No, I did it last week as well. And how's it, how's it been? Like, it's been good. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's just another ensemble for her, so. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, it's fun. No, I like the, the change of environment from one ensemble right. to orchestra. It's a nice little change. I thought she was talking to me. Yeah, I know. She, kind of, she really could have been, though. Yeah, she could have. Yeah. Big... <laughs> Big fan huge of the show. Huge guest. Huge guest. She's making me nervous. I have to like one up her. No. <laughs> no. But like you're so you're in your first year of masters here. Like how have you I liked am. it? How have you liked to hear EJV so far? I like it. Well, okay, EJV and the studio are two different things. But I like Okay, being the here. school. Like you the school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um no, I love it. It's nice to be in a big city for once. That's a huge change for me. Right. Um the studio's great. I love everyone yeah. so much. Yeah. I love the studio here. Um yeah, everyone's amazing. It's so nice to be around these people every day. How would you compare it to your time at Western? Um, the Western studio was close as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've thought about this a lot actually. We had a lot more opportunities to hang out outside of school. I think cause, More than us? Yeah, because everyone lived, like everyone lives so close in, in London. Um, but here, I mean, you're from Pickering, yeah. people are from Markham and Ajax, and then like different sides of Toronto. So it's a lot harder to, to like hang outside of school. Right. Um, but yeah, I think we're a lot closer inside of school, if that makes any sense. Right. Like, there's a lot more inside jokes and yeah, little and I, gimmicks I hear, going on. Yeah. Like, I hear from people of other instruments saying, like, yo, like, you percussionists are so yeah. so close. And, like, other instruments don't barely even get together like that, yeah. you know? Like, the fact that we had, like, Christmas get-togethers and stuff mm -hmm. and Braden hangs, like, it's yeah. just super nice. No, it's good. I think, uh, yeah, I don't know why that is. I think it's just the culture here. Right. But, um... I heard it, it was different before. Right. Like, yeah, I heard this year's good. But I don't know, it's my first year, so it's hard to say. Right, same, I, I haven't been here that long, so yeah. it kind of is hard to say too. Yeah. Because I've been here just one year more than you, and it was also pretty good last year, mm -hmm. right? But I do want to ask, uh, so that same question, what would be your earliest musical memory okay. you had? Um, I don't actually know. I think... Um, pro okay, my dad a, was a drum set player actually, oh, yeah. um, all throughout high school and when he was in his early 20s or so. Um, and he used to play in bands. And when I was a kid, he used to still play at night. Um, it wasn't like his profession, right? No, 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 it was just for fun. Like right. he'd be, uh, he would have this German band with his friends and they'd okay. play at the German club in Windsor. It was a good time. Um, but I would always be awake, just hanging out at home, like playing with my brother or something. And then he would be practicing downstairs. Really? And I think that was the first time that like you were kind of just like, oh, this is what music. Yeah, is exactly. Going on, yeah, that was thing. the first like intro, I guess. That's my really ears. sick. It was really cool. Yeah. Dang. So when was the first time you ever like touched an instrument, kind of thing? Where was that step um, into like you taking initiative into music for you? Probably piano lessons. How How old were you when you started that? Uh, like seven or eight, I want to say. Okay. Yeah, like grade four. Is that how old you are in a grade? No, that's grade like four, grade you're two. Ten. I can't remember. Somewhere, yeah. somewhere in between like grade two and four, I think, right. is when I started. Um, yeah, that was the first time. Piano was my first instrument. Okay. Yeah. So from there, when did, when did you start like doing percussion? Was piano like a big part of, like, did you like piano leading into starting percussion? Or yeah. piano was some stupid kind of extracurricular you had to do? Well, yeah. So they put me in piano. They like forced me into it right. essentially, um, which I'm really thankful for. Yeah, uh, I learned a lot from that, but I didn't. It wasn't my choice. I wasn't like, "Hey, mom and dad, I want to do piano." You know, <laughs> so they forced me into it. Um, I ended up liking it. 
it wasn't my favorite thing in the world, but... Right. Um, Would you yeah. say... I haven't asked this, this to Sam, but I feel okay. like it could apply to him, but he plays piano, like, way more than Sam's anyone really in good. the studio. Sam's nasty But, like, piano. I feel like we have very similar, like, yeah. in the piano background, just kind of started really young. Right. Would you say that it helped with your mallet playing? A little bit. It, it I, helped I, with I note learning. Help. Yeah, yeah, same yeah, yeah. here. Um, and, like, just recognizing intervals really yeah. quick. Yeah. Like, uh, especially, like, sixth. I don't know. Those <laughs> are, like, easy for some reason. They just... I see them and they click. And I think that's from piano. Right. Um, well, yeah, yeah, so... I think. So, like, playing piano and being forced into it, how did you... How big was it to you leading into starting percussion? Like, um, yeah, so I, I started taking private percussion lessons because I wanted to quit piano, actually. Really? Um, yeah, so I did my grade 8 RCM in piano. And was that because you, your dad played the drums, or you were even just like, this um, is cool? No, I just wanted to like explore it a bit more. Um, okay. I mean, I played drum set at home every once in a while, but I didn't take a single lesson. Casually, you just like... Yeah, just your, around my dad's dad. Kit. Yeah, and he would like show me some stuff, and then I would try and play it, and right. I was never good. Um, <laughs> but I would just mess around, right? Right. Um, but yeah, I started... I wanted to stop playing piano. Um, I think I just got like... I don't know, it wasn't my thing anymore. Right. Um, and my parents were like, you have to still study an instrument or something. You have, like, to, you have to take music. lessons. So I had to like choose. Was that, was that a way? Is it because they like music a lot or more like they don't want you to be lazy? No, I think I was never a lazy kid. I okay. always was really busy after school right. um, with like sports and music and, you know, like other hobbies, I guess. But um, I think they just saw the benefits of taking private lessons, no matter what instrument. Interesting. And they really wanted me to continue that through high school. I, until the end of your high school? Yeah, too? exactly. Wow, okay. um, so yeah, I, I started taking lessons with the, the prof at University of Windsor. Um, okay. Which was great. He's awesome. I love him. Um, and you were like, how old were you when you started like lessons with a prof? Uh, like, I was in grade 10, so like... Okay. What is that, 15? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah you yeah, turn 15. 16 grade 10, yeah. Y do you? Yeah, you do. You do That's yeah. Because okay, yeah. all, all the girls have their street 16 in grade 10. Okay. I just, that was, also, I grade 10 was way closer to me than you yeah right? true 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 that, I know, that was a while ago, ago. that was like 10 years ago <laughs> wait what no oh, i'm tripping no it was not 10 years ago it for five? you five no it was like seven seven or eight that's embarrassing was it really because for me it was well yeah four, four years ago and then two and i'm in my first year master's you're so three so it's seven yeah seven or eight years yeah holy shit that's a but, long time ago so yeah so you started percussion lessons at grade 10 and what was it like working with like your first teacher uh it was good it was really good yeah, yeah he was really comfortable with teaching beginners okay. um, so the trajectory of like learning things was really right. smooth were you um, picking picking up from drum kit or just like starting with like automatic like snare oh, solos and all that yeah so I uh, I joined the marching band um, before lessons yeah like, before taking percussion okay. lessons so I started that when I was 9 or 10 I think oh wow okay. um, yeah my brother joined first and then I was always a copycat of what my brother did <laughs> oh, okay so uh, is he a musician too he is yeah he's a pianist okay yeah okay. so he's living in Ottawa now but he got his undergrad and master's at Western okay yeah. and is he like like doing lots of music stuff like now like, yeah. yeah 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 so he has sick. a really small studio I think four or five kids is it more it like a, was it like an ed kind of no he did performance performance yeah and he's teaching um well, he's like a studio teacher kind of a little bit yeah That's he's sick. getting there and then he has a job at uh as a church music director wow. so he conducts choirs and like programs the masses and stuff that's um, awesome yeah yeah Dang, he's okay. living life up there it's good <laughs> but yeah drum line starting drum yeah line yeah, yeah. And... um yeah i got into that when i was like nine right nine or ten is when i first started um and it was just a casual extracurricular for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went on a field trip to the States and saw like the first big show that I've ever seen. And then- Where in the States? Oh, was it like- Indiana? Okay. Yeah, we that just was... bust down. It was like five hours or something. Okay. Yeah, it was cool. That's sick. Yeah, it was sick. So, so then like taking drum lessons with that professor and stuff, when was the point that you were either personally starting to take percussion seriously or mm. Or if this is like kind of answering the same question, like when was the point you want to go to post-secondary for? Yeah, that happened percussion? probably grade 11. Yeah, grade <laughs> 11 is probably when it happened. Um, when I was taking lessons in grade 10, it was just another casual instrument that I was starting because right. I just quit piano. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know, I just got into it. I was in youth orchestra. Um, in, there was, there was in, a Windsor youth yeah, orchestra. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so yeah, I just, I don't know, I just started being surrounded in that world, and then I okay. 
really liked it, so I wanted to continue. Was it just like nothing else would make you like satisfied? You like if you go into anything else, <laughs> you wouldn't really be that happy with it. Yeah, well, that, that was that was a big decision when um, when it was time to apply to schools. Were you good like, at other stuff? Like in a, was there any in academics? Yeah, like subjects that you would. Yeah, could have gone I was into. I was interested in psych, a little yeah, bit. Okay, um, and I was kind of leaning towards criminology, or something okay. to study. Um, but I had to make that that tough decision of like, do I go to music school or not? Right. You know, and have a like heart to heart with myself. Yeah. Um, that was interesting. But yeah, it was. I just came to the conclusion like I can't imagine spending my life without music. playing music or being surrounded yeah. by music and it like and just taking it super seriously. Like, yeah, exactly. It's hard like, to really just take it seriously if you're not. Yeah. In it, right? Yeah, like, exactly. So that was the big decision making point. And was. I know at Western it's not the same as UFT. Like me and Cass talked about that, but with Laurier, how like when you go in in the first year, you're not decided on like a stream already. Mm. But was there a certain stream you're already kind of aiming at before your first year? Yeah, um, I think I was aiming for performance. Okay. Right when I went in, um, just because I loved it. Like I loved playing in youth orchestra. I liked playing the solo rep uh, right. with my teacher. It was that was where my passion was. Right. Um, but I've always been interested in teaching. Like I love teaching. Um, I'm fortunate now to to have some students outside of school. Yeah, like, um, like private students. No, I I teach a program at a high school here uh, for drumline. Is it? It's St. Michael's Choir School, right? Or no? It's college school. College school. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Is there a choir school too? Do you want to know about that? No. Oh shoot. What dude. is it? It's like the most niche private school what like, do you mean? I've ever heard of. Choir school. Yeah. Like so, they all sing. Like every single person in the all school day? sings. That's what they do. No, like they have, like they do, like well. Possibly, I think. I don't know. I don't go there. I didn't go there, right? I'm sorry. Like, I don't know. Like, it, it goes from, like, grade 3 to grade 12. Yeah. Right? Okay. And, like, you know, all everyone there has to sing. Weird. Yeah. And I think if you're very young going into it, you don't, like, you don't have to really be good at singing. Yeah. But if you're, like, trying to transfer and you're, like, in grade 8 mm, or you 9, audition you have to audition and stuff. Audition and, stuff. and, yeah. And also, you have to be, like, Catholic. Right. And, and then also, by, like some weird association this isn't even like a weird stereotype thing it's just kind of every most italian people i know like they're always italian that go to saint michael's choir yeah mm-hmm. what okay yeah that's so weird but no but it's it's actually sick like they <laughs> like not the, like, like, it's actually sick because like they um they perform in like massey hall every every no way. like december really yeah and then i um well it's private right so they have money yeah and they um perf- like my cousin went there he's like i think a couple years older than you he he like performed for the Pope in the Vatican, as a part of like their school thing. It's a crazy gig. Yeah, but the, the did you get an autograph? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That'd be crazy. But the the weirdest thing too is that like I've, I actually haven't met anyone here that has gone to that school. Yeah. Yeah, I've no, never even heard no of that school. Guys. I mean, I just got here, but like. Right. Yeah. But yeah, it's crazy. But it's like, weird. Yeah, so you teach that program and like. Not how, that one. No, no, but you teach oh, yeah, your, yeah, yeah, you yeah, program yeah. for the. Yeah, yeah, you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Both like. Those. Like, how did you get that gig? Uh, yeah, so it was through... Oh, this is a long story. Um, the guy who taught it before did his undergrad at Western. Um, okay. And he came... Was it last year or two years ago? I think he came two years ago because he was applying to a DMA in the States. Okay. And because he went to Western for his undergrad, um, Jill, the, the studio teacher there, right. gave him access to prep for the audition at Western. Right. Um, so I met him there, and then we were like drumming together. He was a drum corps guy as well. Okay. So we had the same background as me. Was there um, many drum corps guys at West No, were you also like the only There's one? There's like no drum corps guys in Canada. Yeah. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, because like, you're the only one I've like me show, and like, a few others, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I know, it's so. It's just a completely different world. It's pretty sick. It's too though. bad, but like, yeah, it is what it is. You have uh, that like little special. Yeah. Though, which is like it's, really sick. It's a really unique, like, niche, it, like. I don't, what do you call it, program, I guess? Or, like, way of training? Yeah. It's just, it's different from everything else that you do here. Right, or um, anywhere, honestly. Yeah, it's it's really, like, one of a kind kind of thing. Unless, yeah, there's not even marching band here. Yeah. Um, that's, it's part of state's culture, I don't know. <laughs> but they have it locked down. Like, they have funding, they have the instruments, <laughs> they have the they money. They care about music. They have the students. Yeah, yeah. Like, everyone there is, is wanting to do that activity. So, it's competitive there, but it's, like, non-existent here. Right. And it's so, just hours away. It's crazy. So that dude just like got you the the gig essentially. Yeah, because he he was teaching at the school and he was leaving for his DMA. His DMA exactly. Right. Um, so he's like, I need someone to replace me. Okay. Um, and then COVID happened, so I couldn't until this year. 
Right. But I ask you these like education questions mostly because like I, I gave a read of your bio a while ago and it's like. It, it Dude, seems that you. Bio? Of course. Dude, it's the you studio. You did research, man. Let's well, not, go. It wasn't for this, actually. Oh, okay. I read it a while ago. It kind, of, it kind of stuck with me how, like, you kind of label yourself as an educator. Yeah. Like, was it because of that, or even before then, you kind of had a, a little knack for, like, being a music educator? Yeah, I always, I always just liked teaching. Um, right. I mean, I like performing too, but teaching is. It, like, comes natural to me, I guess. Okay. Um, Do you teach much before, like, like this year like during your undergrad uh yeah so i taught so western has a marching band as well and i taught their drum line um wow That's... from second year so second third and fourth year i taught the drum line there you have to teach like dudes older than you yeah that's crazy yeah it was fun <laughs> but the uh the marching band like people come and they don't know how to play we have to teach like how to hold sticks right and what rhythms are and teach them how to read music so it's it's starting from scratch right yeah that's interesting. it's good though man. it's really it's honestly a really interesting teaching experience to right. like start from day one and you have right. no background of how to do this you know like you don't take lessons on how to teach drumline or percussion you just like learn stuff over time right. and you and develop all of, these tricks it's also a lot of like memorization for drum yeah line. like n- i've never seen like music in front mm. you know yeah so that's kind of yeah it's all up here wild. it's wow. cool yeah is it like intense, a good time. you find uh i mean it depends it depends how serious you take it mm-hmm. at western it was more of a like it, it was just a club Okay. So people did it for fun, right. um, and if we pushed them too hard, it wouldn't be fun, and people would drop out, and we wouldn't have the numbers. Right. So there was that weird in-between of like, wanting to get better at performing um, and increasing our size as a marching band, but also like, keeping it fun so the right. kids are interested. Right. So that was a weird in-between. But once you go to the States and, and do the like, drum corps stuff, it gets really intense. Like crazy rehearsals, <sighs> stupid just stupid i don't know like looking back i would never do it again <laughs> but honestly like it ruined my knees my knees are shot yeah it's bad but it was a good time it was a right. good time i would just yeah never again i know you touched about it like a little earlier about mm. the western studio but like overall like how would you describe your time at western it was good like, not even like comparing uft but like just your personal yeah it experience was there. it was good it was everything i needed it to be for an undergrad what does that mean um Jill, like what did you need in your undergrad? I needed like basic fundamental training. Okay. Um, very slow, very specific technique stuff. Right. Um, and how different was it, like from Jill and your old teacher? Because that's like, he's a university professor, yeah. and you worked with him for like three years before university. Right. So like, how, like, what was it? Just the fact that you didn't feel like you were that developed yet by that point? No. Or you um, just want to be pushed further by yeah Jill. push further i mean once you get into once you actually start school there's a lot more that you can do like i only had an hour with him every week yeah. or sometimes not even every week like every other week right. um, and then i'd go home and i would only have like a practice pad right yeah um, and then also like you have to do like high school homework yeah exactly there's, there's other stuff going on yeah but um, now there's yeah, yeah but once you're in school there's you have access to all the instruments um, and now this is your yeah, and it's your this space. School, this it's is like, school now. This you, is homework now. Yeah, you like, partially live here. You know, yeah. like, you bring food, you eat here. Right. Like you don't sleep here, but a lot of your life is spent in the building. Right. Um, so there is that huge disconnect from before until I started my undergrad. Right. Um, but yeah, Western was good. It was. I loved having access at all times. So okay. the building never closed. Right, you um, talked about that. Yeah, so this is, I would, which is not like this building. No, this building, like, you got to be up by 11 or something. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. But Western, you could show up at, like, 3 in the morning if you wanted to and practice for, like, 5 hours and go to bed at, like, 8 a.m. Like, <laughs> nothing stopping you from doing that. Right. Um, and there were no practice room sign-outs. So it right. was first come, first serve. And then if all the rooms were taken, you were just out of luck, which kind of sucks sometimes. But um, there is enough rooms with the amount of people that it just worked out. Right. Yeah. It was good. So what, um, what kind of like stream of percussion, like do you kind of take? Not like that. I don't. Anyone needs to take a stream, of course. Mm. But like, where do you kind of like see yourself after this degree, like career-wise? Do That's you, a great question. Like, how do you feel about like percussion solo rap or mm. orchestral percussion? Yeah. Like I haven't had more drumline stuff. Like, what do you what do you feel about that? I mean, I'm done with drumline unless I'm teaching it. It's like. I'm done with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's also it's kind of like a young man's thing. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's an age out to that activity. Really? So once you're 22, you can't participate anymore. No, I did not know yeah. that. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I can't go back. Not that I want to, but like, I mean, it was fun, but I right. don't know, it's just too much. 
it's so much. It's like three months of your life right. where you're not getting paid. Right. And you get like you develop a lot of really good skills, but at the same time, it's like it's just so much time. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I like I really like teaching drumline. Um, I think it's just part of my blood at this point. I've been doing it for like a decade. Right. So I'm really comfortable in that in that sense. Um, so yeah, I'm looking to like continue that here. Um, like continue just like your teaching. Yeah, because it's not like I was saying earlier. It's it's really non-existent in Canada. Right. Um, so it'd be really cool to start up some programs, and I think GTA is the area to do it. I think so too. So um, and you're kind of like, like you would be the guy to do it. You know? I mean, yeah, I would, I would need some help because I don't do you, know how to do that. That's do you crazy. like it here in Toronto? I love it here in Toronto. Because this is like great. your first time like kind yeah. of here. Yeah. No, I love the city. Wow. It's so sweet. That's sick. Yeah, I'm very happy. <laughs> That's sick. It's dude. a huge change from London. Oh my god. Don't ever go there unless you have to. <laughs> the city I, is so bad. How do you feel about like orchestral percussion and stuff? Like, I like it too. Because you, you have your fair experience in that. But kind of. Ever, fair experience of just like you've played in orchestras, you know? Like, yeah, I played in youth orchestra. Um, for two years, um, I played in school orchestras, but right. um, yeah, I never had a chance to do any summer programs because I was always doing drum corps. You've never, oh, well, that kind of counts as one. But. It's so different, though. It's <laughs> yeah, so yeah. different. Like they're not even comparable. Right. Um, so I, I feel like I'm behind in that sense of like right. experience. So right. I'm in my degree here. I got taking lessons with Charles, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm trying to just like build that up and give it a try. Would you ever try to take the orchestra route? Like, yeah. like winning a job? I mean, That's, that'd be great. Yeah. It's pretty stable, it's reliable. Yeah. Um, I just have to do the work to get there. And right. that's kind of like where I'm starting at right now. Sick. Yeah, so that's a long-term goal. That can't yeah. just happen and like, can't snap my fingers and just win a job, you know? Right. It takes a lot of work. Um, How do you feel about like solo? Like, would you ever see yourself as Andy Bush recital oh soloist my gosh. guy? Uh, <laughs> no, I like playing the rep, but I don't really see that as like, you know, seeing yourself as Bev? No. Yo, what's no. up, Jacob? Yo, how's it going? Good. It's good, man. How are you? It's good, thanks. Talking a little bit? Just a little bit. You know? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. I love the hype. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, well, yeah, solo stuff. You yeah. Would, you wouldn't see yourself as, like, I don't Beverly see, Johnson. Yeah, I don't see myself, like, touring on my own, like, right. hauling all the instruments around. Like, <laughs> I like playing the, I like playing the rep. So you're, um, you're pretty practical in that. Like, you're just, like... Yeah, I just can't, like... You, you take uh, that into consideration. I mean, yeah, like, that's... If you wanted to do that, that's something you have to take into consideration. You have to be okay like, with doing. Yeah, yeah, like, either you get an agent to do it, um, and you pay a lot of money, uh, which, honestly, could go a long way. Right. But there's a lot of, like, admin stuff that you have to do on your own in order to make that happen. Right. Like, booking tours, booking flights, rehearsal spaces. It's, like, it's a lot. Yeah, there's a great course here. Um, business of Music Performance that I took. Is that, was that with Peter Stoll? No, no, that was with Andrew Kwan. I don't know who that is. Um, but it was just a flash of, like, I don't know, we're so tuned into these practice rooms and studios and master classes and stuff that... You can't forget that, like... We forget about how it works. Yeah. And what you need to do in order to make it work. Right, and that's like and you're kind like, of eye opening. Yeah, it's like shit. whoa, this is this is yeah, hard. I can't, I can't just like dig around and just yeah, like, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> like I can't like I need like seven cars to fit all of the percussion stuff. You know, you, you got to figure out like renting vans and then yeah, it's a lot. I don't know. Right. So maybe, but I don't I don't I don't see myself doing it. Right. As a career. I see. Yeah. How do you like working with Bev though? Uh, I've only had one lesson with her so far. Okay. Yeah, I have the rest of mine this semester. Um, I'm looking forward to them. Right. Um, the one lesson I had was like crazy. She's so good. She's awesome. She's so good. She's so amazing. She's so musical. Like, yeah. You play one, you play a couple notes, and she's like, has opinions immediately. Yeah. And they're all and like so good. Like she can phrase like one. Oh note yeah. On the it's so nuts. Like yeah. it's awesome. She's great. Like yeah, I'm and really excited to keep working with her. And since, since you talked about like Charles and Bev, like I will ask you like how is it like working with Ayun this year? I, I love Ayun too. Yeah. She's, yeah, she's, man, she just has these metaphors or analogies that like blow your mind. It's like, what? How do you think of that? She, I, I think I would, I would genuinely call her like one of the greatest living percussionists. Like all three of them. Yeah. All four of them. Oh, are, they're crazy. Yeah. yeah. Like even like John, like including John, like all four yeah, of them. Yeah. Like, that's, that's the reason I came here. Yeah. Um, was I wasn't sure of what I wanted to do career-wise, right. um, but I knew I wanted to to get another degree. Um, and do you feel like it's a thing you have to do? I feel like it's not, a thing that people. Like it depends. It really depends on you. I think. Right. Um, as a performer, do you think it's? 
I mean, people win orchestra jobs with just a bachelor's. Like right. Josh Jones only has a bachelor's, right. I think. Bev so does Charles. Has, Bev only has a bachelor's. Yeah, Bev only has yeah. a bachelor's as well. Yeah, I mean, Charles' bachelor's is from Curtis, Curtis so, so it's, it's a little yeah. different. But uh, it's possible. Like, it really depends on your on your work ethic and right. how serious you want to take it. Right. Um, and if, like, the stars align with, like... Exactly, yeah. Open. Yeah, because, like, you know, Bev's, like... She, she won the job at the ballet. Right. Right of her undergrad. Right. And, you it's know, crazy. there happened to be an opening there, and she happened to win it. And yeah, it's, boom, like... And she was pretty set. Right. Like, her, like... Her job, like, her trajectory of her job is just such a kind of dream to me. Yeah. Because she had that, like, she was playing in a pit for ballet, but then while, while she was doing that, getting steady income, she was able to up her solo for mm. stuff and right. get commissions. Like, that's it's super Yeah, cool. I don't know much about her background. You should ask. I should ask. It's sick. I don't know much about anyone's background, really. You should ask. Do a little, your own I know, talk. I should. Do a little, your own, own a little interview. Yeah, I know what they interview. do now, but... A little interview? Yeah. yeah. No, you have to get them on. I'm trying to get everyone, all four of them on. That'd be sweet. Point. Oh, if you also, can interview Charles, man. Also, like, Jeffrey Reynolds on the show. Oh, nice. And just, like, just, like people here. Yeah. Like, That'd be great. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, you could ask some crazy questions. No, literally. Like, or no, not even crazy. Like, I get to ask the same questions and get amazing answers. That's true. All unique answers from all of them. So yeah. it's, it's pretty sick. Yeah, that's cool. But I'm about to start wrapping this up. Sweet. But I do want to ask you, like, what are your personal goals, personal musical goals for the rest of this year? rest of this year? Um, to have a banging recital. Yeah. Yeah. I really want to just throw down and have Are a really good Are you excited about the pieces? Yeah, I am. I love them. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's got to happen. I need to send parts to everyone. Oh my God, I keep forgetting. I'm slacking. Um, yeah, I really want to get into NYO. Sick. So, that'd be sweet. Um, but we'll see. And then, I don't know. Yeah, just enjoy my time. That's awesome. Hanging man. out with the studio. Yeah. Wish you the best for both of those. Thank you. You've been an amazing guest today. Oh, you've been Everyone. an amazing host. <laughs> Thank you, man. You're welcome. Everyone, Andy Bush. Uh, check him out in the description. You can follow him on Instagram and check out all the cool things he does. Oh, thanks. And yeah. Cool. Another episode, another great episode oh, of the EJB Talk Show. This was fun. Yes, so much fun to do. I know. These are so great. sick. <laughs> Thank you so much for cool. watching, guys. Thanks, Peace man. out. Ooh. Okay.